with the environment on his mind. President Muhammad Buhari in late 2019 restated the efforts of Nigeria to diversify its energy source away from dependence on gas-powered system to hydro, solar, wind, biomass and nuclear sources to achieve at least 30% energy efficiency through a renewable energy mix. The aftermath of the Cocoa Saga in Delta State, which resulted in the dumping of toxic waste in Nigeria, gave rise to the establishment of the Federal Environmental Protection Agency, FEPA, by the Babangida administration in 1988. Eventually, the activities of FEPA became streamlined into the structures of the Federal Ministry of Environment. The aim was to oversee the nation's environment and monitor abuse through the design and implementation of policies and laws. By 1999, the Federal Ministry of Environment was created by the Obasanjo administration. The purpose was to strengthen Nigeria's intention to join the League of Nations that has signed up to be environmentally friendly through the enforcement of laws, standards and regulations. It was meant to ensure compliance with provisions of various international agreements, protocols, conventions and treaties on the environment to which Nigeria is a party to. To further consolidate on this national plan, the government of President Umaru Yar Adua established the National Environmental Standards and Regulation Enforcement Agency, NESRIA, in 2007 to ensure a cleaner and healthy environment for all Nigerians. Currently, the agency is under the purview of the Minister of Environment, Dr. Mohammed Mahmoud, and Barista Sharon Ikeazo as Minister of State. We have the National Generator Emission Control Program that will be coming online. Uh, everything is in place to start. So we'll be tasking uh, to make sure generators are being run efficiently and working the way they should because we have to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide, uh, sulfur dioxide, all these gaseous emissions that are causing the climate to warm up and generally causing climate change. The federal government, through NESRA, has provided the legal framework, and that is why we established the National Environmental Standards and Regulations Enforcement Agency. This is the institutional mechanism of the Federal Ministry of Environment with the mandate to control and prevent processes or technology that undermine environmental quality. Since 2007, the agency has had three chief executives. Professor Aliu Jauro, its current Director General and Chief Executive Officer, is the third. He was appointed by President Muhammad Buhari in 2019 to drive the vision of government in this critical sector. An accomplished scientist and teacher, Professor Jauro is expected to oversee and together with his directors and operatives of Nesria, deliver on the mandate of the agency in line with the intentions of the federal government of Nigeria. The National Environmental Standards and Regulation Enforcement Agency, Nesria, is an agency of the Federal Ministry of Environment. So the vision of the agency is to ensure a cleaner and healthier environment. While well, Nesria has the mandate to ensure compliance with all environmental laws, regulations, policies, guidelines and standards. We also have the mandate to ensure compliance with all multilateral agreements on environment to which Nigeria is a signatory. So such uh, treaties include uh, Convention on International uh, Trade for Endangered Species, uh, treaties to do with uh, climate change, uh, and all other treaties, as I have said, to do with the environment. We also have the mandate to prohibit the use of any equipment or technology that impacts on the environmental quality. Uh, to do with chemicals, Nigeria is a signatory to a lot of conventions, such as the uh, Stockholm Convention, 
is also a signatory to a Basel Convention on the Transboundary Movement of Hazardous Waste so, and also the Rotterdam Convention. Together with the uh, Nimina Mata Convention, so Nestria is the one that is responsible for ensuring compliance. The agency is established by a National Assembly Act and that act empowers the agency to come up with regulations to do with uh, the environment. So, so far we have developed 33 environmental regulations cutting across all aspects of the environment. So we go out to ensure that uh, people comply with these regulations. So we also work with stakeholders, both locally and internationally, in order to achieve uh, our mandate. We also sensitize the general public. Towards this end, the agency has been introducing a number of programs for the realization of the marching orders given by government. One of this is the Extended Producer Responsibility EPR, which is both a national and international multi-sector stakeholder strategy to achieve zero or total decrease from harmful electronic waste. This is to ensure that a product at point of manufacture will include plants for its eventual end of life, from products to waste or trash to cash through recycling. What is the level of compliance? We have different sectors, you know, in the manufacturing uh, industry. We have the electronic sectors, we have the uh, food and beverages uh, sectors, we have those that produce that are involved in production of, you know, tires, plastic, and all those stuffs. So they are uh, different sectors, you know, uh, that are that are, are, being, are being targeted, you know, for this, uh, you know, EPR program. But for now. The electronic sector, the battery sector, so the food and beverage sectors are, you know, are really on ground. We are looking at uh, leveraging on the successes of other uh, sister agencies because what is already in place, we cannot reinvent the wheel. For example, we have the FIRS, the tax group, we have the standard organization of Nigeria that is already doing something on. Um, on um, issuance of man cap and stone cap for importers, those importing goods into the country, and man cap for manufacturers. So if we leverage on that, it helps us to also work together in synergy with these sister agencies. That is when we see full compliance. Well, the goal of EPR is to transfer the burden of um, waste management back to producers away from the municipal so it actually involves getting producers to take responsibility for the products throughout its entire life cycle from start to finish including the waste management stage that's what uh, EPR is set to achieve and the advantage of doing that is that it will help producers to think life cycle and if if it's their responsibility to manage the products at the end of life they think about it that okay what's the best way to manage this from upfront and they can put all those considerations into the design of products and uh, their packaging waste and pollutants are toxic and harmful to the environment nesria however created 33 environmental regulation on sanitation but how is nesria able to monitor environmental quality control to ensure sustainability, responsible and healthy ecosystem. Uh, as of date, we have 33 uh, gazetted regulations. These 33 national regulations cover different sectors of the environment. And again, it's not just enough to have this uh, standard spelled out in the schedules of these various or sectorial regulation. As scientists, we deploy equipment, and equipment that are tailored towards measurement. So, um, because we are an enforcement agency, what do we do? We, if we are facing like, for example, quarry sector, where you have a lot of quarries activities, if we want to go and measure uh, the dust, let me use that word, or particulate matter, or look at the water quality. 
we deploy equipment that are used for that. And it is not also just enough to deploy those equipment. The scientists, my staff that deploy those equipment also must be versatile. They must be knowledgeable. So we we'll build capacity for those handling those equipment to be able to measure. So it is also not just enough to deploy the equipment. We do what we call routine calibration to ensure that the result we are getting scientifically are conform with what is contained in the regulation. So a lot of activities and a lot of, uh, and then we we'll do laboratory analysis and all of that to ensure that those standards are met. Are current laws and legislations legal enough to guarantee prosecution of environmental criminals such as airing companies, groups and other offenders? Of course, that's, that's what we do in the department. Presently, we have several cases in courts. You know, both all these um, uh, telecommunication, big telecom companies, because since the cases are in courts, it will be sub judice to start mentioning. But once the, the hearing is on, you will get to hear on the news. You understand? So we have both with the discos, and uh, the big telecoms, um, any environmental polluter, most of the times they are charged to court and prosecuted. In environmental, in the environmental sector, the awareness about uh, environmental offenses is very low. So we we do not have a lot of voluntary compliance. If we have voluntary compliance, we won't have a lot of uh, prosecutions. You understand? So, the awareness is still very low. A lot of people don't know that most of the things they do or constitutes an environmental offense. A lot of people don't know. So, that is where awareness about environmental offenses, environmental laws, and uh, the uh, kind of uh, ways they will be sanctioned. A lot of people are not aware about this. Before the agency started, the rates of uh, pollution had reduced, you know, but not exactly what we want. That is where we're uh, getting serious about letting the public know, that's the regulated community, to know about the environmental offenses and the sanctions. The National Assembly at both chambers have been on hand to ratify laws and conventions relating to the protection of the ecosystem in Nigeria. Nesria also issues environmental permits to businesses and industrial facilities whose operations may have potential impact on the environment to be environment friendly always. For every industrial activity, all industrial facilities, um, there are outfalls there are emissions, there are discharges, okay, and um, wastes that arise from their productions. Some of them we call, some of them that are in wet processes, they, they release effluents. Effluent is simply wastewater, okay, and inside this wastewater, there are, there are certain um, items that pollute the environment. Some of them come in the form of heavy metals, okay, like it may, you may have what we call lead, you may have what we call uh, chromium and um, all other forms of heavy metals, okay. And um, there are also other releases that are hazardous to the environment, so we call them waste and toxic substances, all right. What PERMIT is doing is to make sure that there are permissible, from PERMIT you have permissible limits. So the waste must come, you cannot, you, you, you will not have it at zero level that you don't release, uh, 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 yes, that are acidic or that contain all these heavy metals that I have uh, spoken about. But then you are expected to treat this waste, treat them 
so that as much as possible you remove these um, uh, toxic wastes. Nesria's strides to provide a cleaner and healthier environment also include regulating import clearance procedure to enhance mandatory compliance with regulations on the importation, exportation, production, distribution, storage, sale, use handling and disposal of hazardous chemicals and wastes. Why is it necessary to issue clearance notes and permits? And to make sure that um, it does not, um, that we do not lose track, neither the, the, the facility loses track of their environmental management nor the agency itself losing track of monitoring the environment, monitoring what the, the pollution load that, the, that, the partic that all the facilities are contributing to the environment, this permit is annual. So every year there is such assessment and we issue it, it is renewable every year. I belong to the Inspection and Enforcement Department, mostly focus on the manufacturing sector of the environment. Industries that are into manufacturing, such as the food and beverage, the chemical, the textile, the tannery uh, manufacturing industries. We also regulate um, industries such as the energy sector and the telecommunication sectors. Some of, the some of the duties of the department is to carry out compliance monitoring where necessary. See, uh, we try to checkmate and ensure that industries and facilities operate in an environmentally sound manner. Industries are meant to conduct environmental audit reports and environmental management plan. We try to ensure that um, the standards that they set or they tend to submit and they send to us is in compliance with the set guidelines and regulation. Um, where industry um, fail to comply, we now tend to advise. Where the advice doesn't work, we now tend to go into proper enforcement. Nigeria is a party to the CITES Convention. The agency has also implemented and executed the CITES Convention Treaty fully to ensure that international trade in animal specimens and plants do not threaten their survival in Nigeria. Towards this end, it has designated three authorities as partners to make effective this aspect of the treaty. But then, how is Nesria able to create seamless partnerships with other governmental agencies such as the Customs, Civil Aviation Authorities, the Citizen Sector and NGOs to achieve its goals. Customs Service is one of the key agencies that the agency has been partnering very well, especially in our port operations and airport operations. What we do, Nigeria is not at the port nor at the airport, but if they intercept any suspected substance or material that relate to our function, they just put a call to us and they will keep hold that item until Nezria comes in and then we clarify whether it's a banned substance or it is not. For example, in terms of uh, enforcement of the Convention on International Trade, CITES, where uh, there is a ban in trade of items such as uh, elephant tusk, pangolins, the custom has been very useful. Any suspect carrying out uh, or exporting pangolin, elephant tusks, and related items, the custom either at the sea or at the uh, airports, they intercept. And then they will call Nezria. Nezria, the nearest office of Nezria, they will run to the airport and see. If it is found that uh, the items are really listed in the, uh, in the CITES prohibited list, the suspect and the items are apprehended and then legal proceedings commences. Nesria plays hosts to various promotional events throughout the year, all in a bid to create awareness and ensure better environmental culture for all Nigerians. Here in Nesria, environmental sensitization is at the core of what we do because it's very important that residents, citizens get to know 
what they must do, the role they have to play to protect the environment. So every two weeks we have our staff go out in all the states where we have our field offices and the FCT, we go out to talk to the populace to let them know their roles in protecting the environment. And this has really, really gone a long way in helping to, to teach people, to educate Nigerians on the environment. Because if we, don't, if we don't do that, when people don't know, they act in ignorance. And out of ignorance, we do things, we take on activities that will endanger the environment and in turn endanger our lives and our health. How effective have these events been in ensuring public awareness and participation in maintaining a healthy ecosystem in Nigeria? I would say that people are really keen into because the places we go to for this sensitization, you find out that when we keep going, to, maybe you have a group that goes to, let's say, UTC, and every time we go for sensitization, that particular group goes to UTC, we find out that over time, their environment becomes cleaner. So because we replicate this in different parts of Nigeria, you see the effects keeps spreading. You have more people taking responsibility for their environment and doing the right thing. So yes, I would say that yes, it is really, really impactful. And also, when, when we are out there in the media talking about the importance of protecting the environment, yes, people hear, people listen. We get comments, we get people write us, we get comments on social media, we get feedback, so from, it's from the feedback you actually know that, yes, what you are doing is impactful. Citizens have a great role to play in environmental management too. From my perspective as a professional, it does not only lies with government, but also the citizenry. Number one, the government must ensure serious sensitization and education of its citizenry about the effect of environmental degradation, the effect of human activities, the effect of the socio-economic activities on the environment and the negative effects on humankind. When this sensitization is done so well, that means the citizenry will also be aware and will not live in ignorance. And the citizens first from their own a small enclave will want to and will be willing to safeguard their environment for their betterment. The role of Nesria towards creating a more comfortable and healthy Nigerian environment is enormous. But lucky enough, the agency has a team of dedicated staff who are constantly on the lookout for options and smarter ways of doing things. The highly skilled staff are in tune with the vision of its leadership and strategy to achieving the intents of government. Whatever you do, human resource is key. You cannot work without a uh, human being. So, so far we have uh, a total of 31 state offices. Uh, we are going to have uh, additional three offices. We are good to go. So we'll just be left with uh, only three or two states without uh, and uh, next year office. So in all these offices, we have our staff, technical staff, the admin staff. So these staff are those that always go out because the activities happening in that very environment needs to be taken care of. So that's why we work with our staff throughout the Federation and we seek forward to uh, employ more because we are lacking enough manpower. If you have enough staff, we can be posting them even to the local government governments where they can be there so that they ensure strict compliance to these environmental regulations in order to safeguard the environment. You can also report an environmental violation on the Nesri official website. Maintain, save and protect your environment for the future and from damage, destruction and havoc by complying with Nesria today.
Nezria, ensuring a clean and healthy Nigerian environment.